throughout the year, somewhere in your chemistry class, you're probably going to get to some unit on the types of chemical reactions or ways of classifying chemical reactions. Double displacement or sometimes double replacement reactions or what are sometimes referred to as metathesis reactions are some of the most common ones that we encounter in a regular chemistry course. This demonstration here is actually a really dramatic and very visually impressive way to sort of demonstrate a really beautiful double displacement reaction. Inside of both of these beakers here, I have a 0.25 molar concentration of sodium hydroxide. These solutions are measured out to be about the same volume. If you purchase the kit, you'll also get pieces of wire screening that you just need to fold into sort of a basket shape so that's going to fit inside of the beaker and that these substances will be able to dip down into the solution. So both of these are just regular, ordinary steel wire mesh screening. The first compound I'm going to add is copper 2 sulfate, or cupric sulfate. These ones come in fairly large crystals, and if you take a close-up of that, you can see that the crystals are very large there. One of the things that we know about kinetics and rates of reaction is that a larger surface area enables a faster reaction. This one is a very small surface area, considering the larger chunks you have, the less surface you have. So this one reacts actually quite slowly. Make sure that if you demonstrate both of these, the other one I'm going to use is a cobalt nitrate solution. You can see the crystals are much smaller, much more granule. This one looks sort of like granulated sugar. Uh, this one reacts a lot more quickly. So make sure when you do this in your class that you actually do the copper first and then the cobalt second because if they see the really fast one and then the slow one, they'll think it's the lamest thing they've ever seen. So make sure that you start with the copper first. And when you pour the copper sulfate in, when it first goes in, you don't see much of a reaction at all. In fact, it almost looks like nothing happens. This is a really slow reaction partly due to the surface area, partly due to the slightly limited solubility of copper sulfate. It's just not a fast dissolving compound and it's not fast to react. So we're going to take a time lapse of this reaction so you can see what it's going to look like over a series of a few hours and I encourage you to leave this set up for a few hours or even overnight in your classroom so the kids can see the crystal growth over time and it's not going to be an instantaneous thing. The other way you can do this is by using a cobalt nitrate. This is cobalt-2 nitrate. When you put the cobalt into here, you'll see, first of all, that the reaction happens much more quickly. In fact, some of the crystals start to sink to the bottom right away. But if you get a close-up right underneath, you can start to see the threads of the reaction as the double displacement happens, and you can actually see some of the compound being formed. And you see two very different colors. You'll see the blue, you'll see the sort of violet or the pink color that's generated, because we're actually getting two different compounds out of the double displacement displacement reaction of the cobalt to nitrate with the sodium hydroxide. You are generating cobalt hydroxide, but sometimes it only adds in a piecewise fashion. So the cobalt hydroxide can form where one hydroxide replaces one of the nitrates, or it can go where both hydroxides rep replace the nitrates. So you get two different colors of compounds, one pink and one blue. And I'm going to go to the chalkboard right now so I can show you a couple of the reactions and what's actually happening here. With the copper 2 sulfate, when you react that with the hydroxide ion from sodium hydroxide, the sulfate is a spectator ion, so I'm just going to take that out. 
And it's really just the copper two ion for the net ionic reaction that's going into the reaction here. So these ions, which are dissolving in solution, react with the hydroxide. You're going to react two hydroxides, and you're eventually going to get copper hydroxide. That's sort of a bluish, turquoise-ish color. You'll notice, though, that if you let this sit overnight, that you're going to start to see a new color emerging. Instead of the blue, you'll actually start to notice a blacker crust on the outside, or maybe a brown, which is a combination of the black and the blue. That copper hydroxide, there's always dissolved oxygen in our water as much as we might try to, to get it out. I also didn't boil the solution before to try to get any gases out. Uh, but that copper hydroxide can actually convert in the presence of oxygen into copper oxide. That's the black compound that you'll notice after a day if you let this sit overnight. It's actually going to take a very different appearance the next day. The cobalt solution you're starting with cobalt 2 nitrate. Well, nitrate's a spectator ion. Nitrates are highly soluble ions. And so that's going to just stick in solution and not participate in our reaction. So really, you're dealing with cobalt ions and nitrate ions in solution. Well, when that cobalt ion and that nitrate and the hydroxide are all present in solution, you can actually get a complex ion here. Cobalt's a transition metal, and I don't explain complex ions to my introductory chemistry class. I only explain that to my advanced chemistry class, uh, or my second year chemistry class. But what happens here, that first one that you're seeing, the first color that you start to see there, is actually cobalt bonded to hydroxide and nitrate at the same time. The secondary color you're seeing, the pink color there, that's what happens if cobalt that complex ion gets exposed to some more hydroxide ion. Then you get just cobalt hydroxide. So those are responsible for the blue and the pink color that you see. If you let this sit overnight, though, you'll notice another color change. You'll get sort of a grayish white and sometimes a brownish black crust on the outside of it. This cobalt hydroxide, just like what happened with the copper hydroxide, that cobalt hydroxide over time in the presence of more water, and we mentioned that oxygen that's kind of always sitting around there, that can start to convert to cobalt oxide and cobalt hydroxide. And what happens here actually is you actually change cobalt from a plus three, or sorry, plus two ion up to a plus three ion as this reaction progresses. So you can see, you start to see a wide variation. Now, what I would give my kids, probably just this one and that one when I'm talking about double displacement reactions in interchemistry. If you want to go further, there are, there are reactions there, but it is important just to keep it as simple as you can for a beginning level class. And if you look at the copper now, you can actually see the long tendency tendrils that have already started to form inside of the copper. And the beautiful thing is, if you get a really close up, right at the end of one of the stalactites, you can start to see the actual crystal growth. If you sit there and watch it and you keep a very still eye, you can actually start to watch the crystals forming as they drip down. It really is a spectacular thing if you can get your students to just sit there and watch. Because we so rarely get a chance for students to watch crystal growth. It happens very slowly. It's hard to create. But when they can actually see crystals forming inside of a solution, it really is a magical thing the first time that you ever see it. For us as chemistry teachers, it's sort of old hat. Oh, yeah, crystals are growing. Yeah, they're pretty. Um, but that first time that a kid really just gets to see a crystal form right before their eyes, it is truly a beautiful and magical thing to observe. I've also given this demonstration. I used to do it myself, but I've also handed it off to our middle school teacher. My school has a middle school and a high school in the same building. My middle school teacher covers a lot of cave formation, rock cycles, geology, plate tectonics. And I gave this to her so she could demonstrate stalactite formation. And what happens when a cave and stalactites are forming is mineral deposits are literally dripping through the ceiling of a cave, or dripping through the screen, if you'll imagine the screen as the ceiling of our cave. And those mineral deposits, as they drip off, just start getting deposited. Well, a geology teacher can never, or an earth science teacher can never demonstrate demonstrate stalactite formation in real time. It takes hundreds of years. But this is a nice way to get kids to visualize the process without just saying, here is the before picture and here is the after. So it's a great demonstration to also share with other teachers in your building. I hope that you find it as beautiful of a demonstration of a double displacement reaction as I do, and that you'll be able to use it in your classroom. Thank you.